um, huge for agreeing, agreeing to speak. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. Good. Okay, so that, that's sharing okay, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Good. Now I've got all the speakers as a little strip above. I don't think it's cutting anything off though. Good. So, um, as this is a, a, only the opening anyway, it doesn't matter if people come halfway through. I'll, I'll, I'll get started then so we can keep to time. Well, uh, my name is Mark Pallon. Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our Darwin Day 2022 at Norwich Research Park. Uh, this is the fourth of these events that we've organised, um, and this is the second one that we've done as a virtual event. Um, and uh, this time around, we're going to talk about uh, Darwin evolution and climate change as the, the theme. And I'm just going to give you a very brief introduction to the topic. I'm probably not worthy of giving such an introduction, but that doesn't usually stop me. So I'll, I'll keep going. Um, so just to outline uh, the, uh, the programme for today. So we have two sessions. Um, in the first, I'll be talking first of all, and then let me just control that. Yeah, I'll be giving a quick introduction and then chairing the first of the sessions where we have two talks on the Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum, one from Steve Jones, a former colleague of mine from the University of Birmingham, and one from John Todd, who works at the Natural History Museum in London. And then we're going to have a, a short break, and then Tracy uh, will take over as session chair, um, and we've got Professor Nancy Knowlton, who's going to talk about coral reefs and climate change, so coral reefs and atolls, something very close to Darwin's heart. Uh, she's from the Smithsonian, the National Museum of History, uh, National Museum of Natural History in Washington. And then Ali Fillimore is going to um, give us a talk about time it right in, in, in a change in climate, about uh, phenology and how the timing of biological events like migrations and flowering and so forth change as the climate changes. And then Trace is going to, to do a wrap up. Uh, we are recording this event so that those who are not able to make it now will have the chance to look at it. So bear that in mind if when you ask questions that you are being recorded. And we're assuming that you were sent to that by being here. So, first question is, well, hang on, why are we talking about all this earth science and geology uh, when we are celebrating Darwin? And although we uh, recognise Darwin as uh, a naturalist primarily, and primarily because of his theory of evolution. In fact, he was a, a, a geologist of considerable uh, accomplishment as well. Um, and that's um, been summarized in this book by Sandra Herbert a few years back, where, where she pointed out that, you know, in the history of geology, Darwin was a major figure too. The problem when you look at uh, climate change or any kind of uh, mass extinctions and things like that, if Darwin wasn't right in this area, it's kind of a, a tricky thing. Darwin lent very heavily on Charles Lyell, the principles of geology from Charles Lyell on board the Beagle and devoured it. And the whole uh, breakthrough that Charles Lyell made was uh, this idea of uniformitarianism, and you can see there as the subtitle of his book, an inquiry how the former changes of the Earth's surface are referable to causes now in operation. Um, uh, uh, that's often um, summarised the, the idea that the present is the key to the past. Um, and uh, so the idea that there were catastrophes in the past that wiped out all or most life was something that Darwin was very much uh, sceptical of. And in fact, even uh, before he wrote The Origin Species, way back in 1844 in his essay, there's a note in the margin, better begin with this, that species really, after catastrophes created in showers, showers world over, my theory false. And if we look at um, what he wrote actually uh, in The Origin of Species, it's the 1859 edition here, um, I, I put some extended quotes there, but let's just look at the, the bits in red. The old notion of all inhabitants of the earth having been swept away at successive periods by catastrophe is gen very generally given up. Um, and as a gradualist, he was 
are adamant that species and groups of species gradually disappear. Now, of course, he had to look at the, the, the geological record and make sense of that. And so he does accept, as you can see a bit later on in that chapter, because he had a whole section on extinction in the, in the origin. He says, in some cases, however, the extermination of whole groups of being such as of Ammonites towards the close of the secondary period has been wonderfully sudden. So you kind of think, oh, maybe he is moving towards accepting uh, uh, mass extinction events. But his explanation for that, for the uh, disappearance of trilobites and so forth, was really that there were so many imperfections in the, in the fossil record, the wide intervals of time between our consecutive formations. And in these intervals, I mean, it mean much uh, slow extermination. And so it, this, this is one area where Darwin didn't quite get it right, you might argue at least, uh, although it is still quite a hot topic in evolution. Um, um, he didn't have much to say about climate change either. He did talk about climate as an effect uh, on, uh, as a component, in fact, of natural selection. And he says here, the action of climate seems at first sight to be quite independent of the struggle for existence. But insofar as climate chiefly acts in reducing food, it brings on the most severe struggle between e individuals. So he does, he does, but he was more interested in times of extreme cold, um, which as he pointed out in, in one particular winter, 80% uh, of the birds in his own grounds died because it was cold. Um, of course, the idea of global warming um, does have um, roots back in the uh, 19th, 1820s, they create, proposed green, the greenhouse effect to explain why the Earth's temperature is higher than one might expect from the sun's energy alone. Um, Darwin's contemporary, John Tyndall, um, showed that water vapor, methane, carbon dioxide could exorbitate radiated heat and re-radiate it within the atmosphere. And he speculated that the changes in the composition of the atmosphere, in particular those gases, may have been the cause of climatic changes in the past, such as ice ages. And then in the late 19th century, Svante Arrhenius, the Swedish um, scientist, modeled the effects of carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, uh, and they specifically addressed what happens if you take the levels down or take them up in terms of global temperatures. And then, of course, fast forward, we get to the so-called Keeling curve in the late 20th century, uh, where global warming has, has now become uh, established as an established event. And here's a, a graph showing you um, the rise in temperature um, in recent uh, decades. But of course, um, going back to Lyle, we, we have to look at these things in the um, context of deep time. Um, and this episode of global warming, although in in many ways, always unprecedented because it's caused by humans. Um, but there have been episodes of climate change in the past. Um, uh, and here, just going back over 65 million years, you can see if you go far enough back, you see this so-called Paleo-Eocene thermal maximum uh, where temperatures are much higher than they are now. And that's going to be the subject of the first two talks um, for this session. And here I just grabbed uh, a screen dump from a, a Wikipedia article. It uh, just shows you that there have been numerous climate change events and, and, and extinction events uh, over the, the Earth's history. And so uh, we, we have to sort of question whether gradualism is uh, a universal phenomenon over time. And this has been one of those lively debates, the uh, Dawkins versus Gould kind of argument about punctuated equilibrium versus phyletic gradualism, evolution by jerks, as it's called, versus evolution by creeps, as to whether evolution is Dawkins kind of pointed out that nobody really accepts that it's always going at the same time, but it's always going fairly slowly, probably. Um, and so that, that's basically all I was going to say is just as an introduction to get us started. Uh